Uh, Senator Mike uh, Braun joins us. Of, he's a Republican from the beautiful state of Indiana, Senate Budget Committee member. Uh, Senator, good to have you. Haven't t talked to you good in a to while. Be on. You are not keen on, on this measure, right? Well, it's for me, it's mostly the process. You got to remember, uh, this should have started October 1st of 2022. Uh, it is so broken in both the House and the Senate. Senate's probably worse than the House in terms of doing budgets, Neil. When I was a state legislator, we did budgets. We did a biennium bill, got it done in three and a half months, talked to all the agencies, the stakeholders. There's no process here. We haven't done a budget that we've adhered to since the late 90s. So looking at where we're at now, I just listened to Kevin. That sounds about as good a way for us to get to avoid a shutdown. It depends on is your priority to keep the government going. I wish we had a bill out there. I'm for a no government shutdown bill. That should be a bill that eliminates this kind of drama at the end of your fiscal year. We also need another bill, no budget, you don't get a paycheck. Then you'd see things getting done on time. And I'll end with this in terms of the malaise we've got. When I got here five years ago, the default was borrow money. It was a trillion dollars a year. It's now a trillion dollars every six months. Regardless of what you believe the federal government should do, it's not good for the institution. It's terrible for America. And we are in a place that is disgusting, I think, to most people out there watching it. You know, Senator, I know your, your, your vantage point is the United States Senate, uh, but there has been this push now among more conservative members in the House. Those, for example, dominant in the Freedom Caucus, what have you, they had it with Kevin McCarthy. To, to your point at the, at the outset of this, sir, that, th that we knew this date was coming, so did he. He could have prepared better, and he did not. What do you think of that and that he should go? Well, I think when you're bragging about what we've done in the Senate, we haven't gotten a bill really passed, okay? He's gotten six or seven appropriations bills done. So he's improved, but the whole system is broken. Why are we doing this at the tail end of your fiscal year? And since I've been here, we generally don't get this resolved into the new fiscal year. Nothing to really brag about in either chamber. The American public's going to have to start uh, wondering who are we sending here? Do we need term limits? Do we need a balanced budget statute or amendment? I think that's the only thing that keeps this place in order. No other place functions like it. You know, um, many uh, Republicans, uh, maybe a more moderate, I don't know how you want to classify them, Senator, have been showing and uh, their frustration with the process. Uh, a couple of days ago, I had Mike Lawler on, the Republican New Yorker, who had flipped that Democratic 17th district seat. And he said, um, you keep running lunatics. You're going to be in this position. He says, this is not conservative republicanism. This is stupidity. What did you think of that? I mean, some of that uh, extreme drama I don't think is uh, fruitful either. But what are you going to do to change a system that looks like it doesn't want to change itself? Sooner or later, we'll have to do something. We're borrowing 30 cents of every dollar we spend here. Uh, I don't think that's emphasized enough because whenever you, I talk to people back in Indiana, if they're for something, I said, I'll say, would you be for it if you knew we were borrowing 100% of the money? They're flabbergasted. They're shocked. So sooner or later, something's got to give. The Medicare trust fund goes broke in four years. Yeah. I think Social Security in nine years. Try adding up what the interest is going to be when you start putting 1% uh, of 33 trillion. Interest rates have gone up 5%. That'll crowd out all domestic and defense spending that's discretionary, and that's right around the corner. So something's got to give soon. Yeah, you know, your way is to make that, and your business background is coming to help you there because the, the, the rise in interest rates has added about one and a half trillion to that debt pie, to your point. I, I am curious what you make of it. Again, I, I apologize, sir. I know you're on the Senate side, but Matt Gates, the Florida congressman, might be entertaining a run for governor of Florida the year after next. Uh, he has been really down on the speaker, really down on caving on these issues. Uh, and uh, they don't, you know, on the modern side, you know, they, they don't really like that message and they think it's divisive and hurtful to the party. What do you think? Well, I think with the margin that Kevin has to deal with, 
that's probably not fair. I mean, that's as slim as it can be. That's a rowdy crew over there anyway. Uh, if uh, he intends to come back and run for governor, I think the approach for most states, they're looking for problems to be solved. They're not looking for this kind of drama. And I can tell you, in the three years I spent in our state legislature, we get things done. We got a balanced budget amendment. We always have a surplus. It gives us the ability to get a good return on investment and live within our means. I'll have to probably be focused on that not the drama that we have here, and sooner or later, the American public is going to have to put two and two together. What we've got is not working. Something's got to change, and the people that you need to blame are the ones that have been running the show here on both sides of the aisle. All right, Senator, thank you very much for taking the time. Always appreciate it. Mike Braun of Indiana. Amen. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.